Hey everybody and welcome to the Solid Box Lab here in Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm Tanner Knight and today we're going to be talking about the Windows system image and why you'd want to create one. So I'd like to talk about this little guy in my hands right now. This is our black box aviator that we ship with almost every single PC that we sell. We try to encourage this as an option for a local backup for every single PC and this system image is a big part of it. So the Windows system image is a way that you can basically take a snapshot of your PC as it is at any given time. The way we like to do it is we like to take a snapshot of your system before it leaves our office and that way when you receive it, if you ever need to revert to that system image, you have a known good point in history that you can just roll back to at any time. So the system image is a really great backup tool that you can continue to update and if you ever do need to deploy it, the more updated a system image that you have, the better chance you are that you're not going to lose any, any applications or anything that's installed on your PC. One important component to restoring a system image is actually having the Windows installation media. We have a video that outlines that process, so if you've gotten to this video first and you need to know how to create that Windows installation media, check the link below and you'll find that video to show you how to create that Windows installation media. We usually prefer a USB hard drive, but you can put it on a DVD as well. Alright, so let's take a look at how to create an actual system image on a PC, and then we'll take a look at what it is, what the files are, and then how you can deploy it. So here we are on a brand new SolidBox T5820 workstation. This is our engineering desktop level 3 and we have Mastercam installed so we are ready to take a system image. Everything's running great. So this is a built-in Windows tool. All you have to do is type in backup and you get a little backup settings option here in your Windows start menu and when we do that we have a whole array of backup settings including backup using file history which we have another video that we'll also try to link to in the description as well but right now we're going to look for an older backup now you may be asking yourself why does it say go to backup and restore Windows 7 and the reason for that is because this is actually a tool that was developed in Windows 7 so it's kind of a legacy tool but it's one that works phenomenally for modern applications and purposes so we go ahead and go to the backup and restore Windows 7 and this opens up another window where we get another set of instructions. So over here on the left we have create a system image. Now before we do this I do want to show you that I have the black box aviator plugged in to this computer currently and it's ready to accept our system image. So we're going to go ahead and create a system image and it doesn't matter if that black box is plugged in through USB 2.0 or 3.0 ports. The 3.0 will obviously be faster but there's no limitation in either port. So once the create a system image dialog box opens up here, it says where do you want to save the backup? Well Windows is smart enough to realize that it probably wants to put it on the backup hard drive that we plugged in. If you do have a set of hard drives in here other than that, then you might want to just drop it down and verify that you're going to put that image on the right hard drive. However, we're going to choose the solid box backup and then click next. And then you can see we have another screen that says these are the drives that are required for Windows to run and will be included by default. So this is saying you can take a system image including all of these hard drives. These three are the C drive including some hidden Windows partitions and this one with the checkbox is our D drive which is a completely secondary hard drive. So let's go ahead and just get that as well so we can get all data in this system image. There is a time when you may not want that D drive to be selected and that's if you would only want the Windows installation as part of your system image. And uh, the reason being, if you do take an image of that D drive and then deploy back to it, the data on that D drive will also be in the same state that it was in that system image. So a careful, important distinction to make. So once we have that D drive selected if we want it or deselected if we don't, we click Next and then there's a little summary and then we start the backup. This process can take anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. It is taking a backup set of files and storing them on that hard drive so it's writing them across the USB drive. So it's not the quickest process but we're going to speed it up for you and fast forward to the end. Alright, so our system image has finished creating and you may get a message asking you if you want to create a startup repair disk. You can say no to that. That's just asking you if you want to create the Windows media creation through another means. Again, don't worry about that. We have another video outlining that. So, what happens when you have a system image created? Go ahead and click the, uh, the close here and then we will navigate to the hard drive that's housing our system image, our SolidBox Backup F and now you have 
an entry here called Windows Image Backup. This is pretty standard. Every single system image using the Windows creation tool will have that naming scheme. Now, I should mention there are quite a few tools that allow you to create a system image and deploy it. We prefer the Windows tools because they're built in, they're free, and most of all, they work. So uh, let's go take a look at what we have inside this folder. Now, when you access these folders, you may be asked to say yes to a permission. Just go ahead and say yes to that. I've already gone ahead and done that, so we don't have to see that. So inside this folder, we have desktop and then this service tag here. So that's telling you that this desktop has been captured in this image. So we have a snapshot of that desktop from that date. And inside here, we have a set of directory of files. Now, uh, you won't notice any specific file types in here that you recognize or that you're familiar with. Backup with the date next to it, if you click on that, you see a bunch of kind of gibbery goo here. We don't really know what this is, but it's all code that will essentially allow Windows to rebuild this specific image as it was captured. So you can't go in here and navigate for files. This is a set of files that gets created that then needs to be unpacked when you do deploy that system image. So inside some of these other folders, catalog, just have some catalog files, log files, uh, not much to see here, but I just wanted to let you know that all of these files that look kind of odd, they do actually represent your system image. And uh, just because you don't recognize the file type doesn't mean it was unsuccessful. So it means it was successful. So that's our Windows system image. And if we take a look at this, this system image takes up about 40 gigabytes. Now, if we were to take a look at the total space on this PC, it's more than that. See, we have 54 gigs here, and then on the D drive, we have another 8 gigs. So it compresses it a bit. But as you can see, the Windows system image takes a snapshot that's pretty, pretty large. 40 gigs is not a small backup. This is not the kind of backup that you'd want to take every single day. In fact, this is the kind of backup that you only want to do after you do a large update, or you add an application, or you do, say, go from SOLIDWORKS 18 to SOLIDWORKS 19. Once you have a firmly good working PC, that's the time to update your system image. So for instance, let's say that we've added an application to the mix and we're ready to take another system image. If we wanted to do that using the same exact components, we can. But be aware, the automatic default setting is for Windows to overwrite your existing system image. So if you want to add to it, we have a protocol that we can talk to you offline about However, just be aware, it will replace the system image by default. If you want to build a library of points in history where you can revert back to, then you can, but just be aware of that limitation. All right, so we've captured a system image. Now what do we do with it? Well, hopefully nothing. The system image to us is really a rainy day type of thing that we hope you never have to use, but it's a great back pocket tool in case things don't quite go right. So for whatever reason, if Windows throws you a curveball and you need to go back to a snapshot in history, it's great to have this. So we were ready to deploy our system image. I have a couple things, additional things in my hands that we didn't have before. In my right hand, I have the Windows installation media that I created previously. And then in my left hand, I have a hard drive that contains hard drive drivers. Now most of you won't have to worry about hard drive drivers as the Windows installation media includes most of them for most hardware out there but we found pretty consistently that the T5820 does require you to download a driver, to unpack it, and then have it available for the system image. So we're gonna show you that process to give you the full comprehensive look at what it takes. However, just realize not everybody's going to have to use this driver deployment technique in order to get that system image deployed. So I have installation media. I'm going to plug in our drivers. And our installation media in the back. And now I'm going to fire up our PC and access the one-time boot menu. In order to do this, you want to wait for the Dell screen to pop up. And once you see that Dell logo, go ahead and start tapping the F12 key. Here's our Dell logo. I'm tapping F12. And you should see a little message pop up that says, entering one-time boot menu to know that you've successfully invoked that command. So once we get to the one-time boot menu, we have some text here, and it's saying Windows boot mode, boot mode is set to UEFI, secure boot mode is on. These are BIOS settings that are very good for your system. Uh, right now it's saying you can boot to the Windows Boot Manager, which is the default Windows installation on this PC, or you can boot to this SanDisk Cruiser, which is that external hard drive 
on which I wrote that installation media for Windows. So I'm going to use my arrow keys to select that, hit enter, and that will give us a Windows installation screen here. So it will give us a Dell logo once again. And we may fast forward through some of this as it takes a little bit of time to get the Windows media all spun up. All right, so we've got our first Windows screen here that has some fields that it asks us to enter. And most of them are going to be fine by default. We have English as our language, time and courtesy format, US, United States, that's perfect for us, and keyboard method is US. So we're going to say next. And then here you might be inclined to just say, go ahead and install now. We don't want to do that. We want to take a look at the fine print here. For once in your life, take a look at the fine print and say, repair your computer. This is where you're going to find the option to restore a system image. So I'm going to click on that. So on this next screen, we have continue, use a device, troubleshoot, and turn off your PC. Now, for restoring a system image, we're going to go to troubleshoot. But there's all kinds of different options here that we may talk about in other videos. But for now, we're going to just keep it simple and show you where the system image tools are. So under troubleshoot, we get a whole set of six options here. Start or prepare, command prompt, uninstall update, UEFI firmware, and restore, uh, system restore, as well as system image recovery. As you may have guessed, that's our option right there. So we're going to select system image recovery, and we're going to select our Windows 10 operating system, obviously. Shouldn't have any other option, but uh, now we do get a Windows 7 looking interface, if you uh, remember Windows 7. So now we get select a system image backup, and the computer will be restored using the system image. Everything on this computer will be replaced with the information on the system image. So important designation. By deploying a system image, it wipes your PC where it is currently and then restores it to that time in history. So you can see we have used the latest available system image, and it gives us all the information about the system image that's on the hard drive that we uh, originally installed it on. So we are going to just go ahead with the default in, uh, info, but if you find that this is not correct, then you may have to select a system image and browse to it. But it's pretty good about selecting the, the right one. So we're going to click Next. Now, we have the option to format and repartition disks. I, select, I suggest selecting these options here. And uh, you have the option to only restore system drives. If you do have a D or E or F drive as part of your system image, if you select that option, it will only restore the C. So uh, we don't necessarily want to do that option right now. But you can see we have uh, the option to exclude disks and install drivers and some advanced options. Now, for this specific PC, it's a Dell T5820 tower. So that means that for whatever reason, the hard drive driver is not installed on this Windows media. So we're going to have to go ahead and install the driver. So we're going to do that right now by clicking Install Drivers. Uh, insert the installation media, which it should already be install, installed here. OK, so now we have some options here. We have uh, this one with T5820. And then if you have a hard time locating these drivers, don't be afraid. It, it's very common. In fact, we have a hard time tracking down these drivers. It's not the easiest thing to locate. But we have done it all, and we have them all. So if you have a, a situation where you need a specific one, don't worry about all of the minutiae surrounding these, these directories. So we're just going to navigate to that driver, which is in this folder in here. And uh, we will open IAVROC, click Open. And you can see that it pulls load the drivers for the Intel volume management device NVMe RAID controller. That's the one we want, so we'll select it. We will add the driver. And it will go ahead and install those drivers. And then theoretically, on the other end, we should be able to see the hard drive. If you proceed without installing the drivers, it will act as if there's no hard drive to deploy that image to. And you'll have to kind of start from scratch. So now that we've done that, we can click Next. And your computer will be restored from the following system image. It's giving you another kind of summary of, uh, of the system image deployment. And when we click Finish, it asks you one more time, do you want to do this? Are you sure? Go ahead and click Yes. And then it will go ahead and deploy that image to the PC. Once again, this process takes about 15, 30 minutes, depending on the size of your system image, depending on how many applications that you have captured in that snapshot, how much data you have, et cetera. So again, this is not an everyday backup. This is a get you out of jail free card that you can just stash into the, in the desk drawer. And if it comes to a situation where you need it, it's a nice little back pocket to have. All right, so here we are back in Windows. Our system image has successfully deployed. 
and all of our settings should be exactly as we remember it. And just to prove that, I'm going to go ahead and open up Mastercam, which just happens to be our application on this system. So this is going to be the case for SolidWorks, for Office. Any application that you have installed on your SolidBox at this point, this system image is going to capture. And then if you restore to it, it will restore to that specific point and capture all of the settings that you've set up. And you can see right here we have our blue to black Mastercam gradient background. So you can pretty much guarantee that all of our settings are still there. But uh, just for kicks, let's go ahead and open up a Mastercam part and we'll also show you a few other things here. So you can't necessarily see this, but the fact that I'm rotating this at all using my 3D Connection Space Mouse means that the 3D Connection driver did successfully get uh, captured in that system image and then uh, successfully deployed on the other end. So even your, your, your 3D Connection drivers come through, all of your application settings, you name it that system image is going to capture it and you can store it in a safe place in case you need it and uh, hopefully you won't but if you do you have a nice back pocket tool that you can deploy at any time so thanks for watching we hope that you got some good information out of this video and we hope to see you on the next one